Hello, welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger coming to you live and also in replay. Well, today's show features somebody I thought we were going to have to wait for, but an amazing opportunity came up. So guess what? Not only is she here with us live today, but she's going to be live with us again in a month. That works for me. So finally, I get to introduce you to, if you don't know her yet, Joy Baker. She'll be on a little bit later. And we're going to be talking about healing generational trauma, as well as ascension symptoms. She talks about how to break the patterns of your past and uh, sometimes not just this life past, by the way, so that you can live a life of freedom. And we're also going to be doing live callers who will receive healings. And just in case you don't get on for that, don't worry, because she's also doing group healings as we go along. So if she susses out some kind of energy or feeling that is something we may not want to be holding on to, such as resentment or anger, she's going to be clearing it for all of us. So you want to stay tuned the whole time. This is the Dare to Dream show with Debbie Dashinger. It won the COV Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Wealth Magazine listed Dare to Dream as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. High ranking in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. If you'd like to go to their class anywhere or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-E-R dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a book writing coach. I also take your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. As well, I am a boutique publicist. I handle about seven various clients, all spiritual messengers doing beautiful work and get them booked on podcasts. And because you're a spiritual messenger and it is your time, I have tips, videos, how-tos, templates for you, how you can start gaining way more visibility for your being, your message, and your business. Go receive my gift. It's on me, debbie-inger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So my guest today is the amazing Joy Baker. She specializes in helping her clients release trapped emotions that can result from trauma because most of us are not taught strong skills for processing trauma. Its effects become stored in our body and can influence our actions, experiences, emotions, and physical health. Joy has developed a healing practice that allows her clients to feel supported, to break through their self-imposed limitations and recognize their value. Joy has had an amazing journey of becoming a healer. She experienced a painful childhood involving abuse, epilepsy, a speech impediment, and bullying. Going down the rabbit hole of pain allowed Joy to clear past trauma and free herself. And today, she does the same for clients. After listening to and experiencing Joy's clearings and activations, people feel renewed with big shifts. If you would like to learn more about her, go to courageinaction.com. And with that, I welcome Joy Baker to the Dare to Dream show. Yay, it is so great to have you here. Hi, Debbie. It's so great to be here. Such an honor to be on your show. Looking forward to it. Yay, me too. (laughs) Thank you, Joy. And you know, I feel like this is so beautiful, so divine, because I live for moments like this, where I get to see you facilitate things, shifts, healing for people who'll be calling in later. And like they get to walk away with something different than when they connected with you. What is that like for you as a healer? My favorite thing in the whole world. You know, it actually reminds me of when I, like I used to exercise race horses. I worked with horses till I was 33 and I would exercise the the horses in the morning. And when I was doing that, I was just, everything else that was going on in my life went by the wayside. I was totally focused because these, these are thoroughbreds, you know, they're, and they're fed like race horses. So I was totally focused on that. And when I'm working with a, a collar, it's like, that's, it's, it's different, but it's so in the moment and it's in the flow 
that I love it. That's, that's my passion. Absolutely. I've heard you so many times uh, speak, be interviewed, be on summits. And I, I just have no idea what it's like to be you. I might Mm -hmm. explain to somebody that it's kind of like you're an x-ray machine and you can see through the matrix of somebody. How do you receive the information? How do you know what's going on with somebody? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. I just want to be clear because it's not me. It's I'm trusting the information that's coming through. And so I'm, I'm in, all I can, it's like being in the moment and nothing again it's like almost like riding the racehorse it's nothing else matters and when i'm working with somebody my complete focus is on them nothing it's it's and i i think i had this gift as a child but then i completely you know numbed it out and forgot about it it's like i know what's going on with them but it's not me that does the knowing it's I trust people will ask me about how do you do this and what do you need to your messages the number one thing is trust You've got to trust because of the mess. The me- messages are coming in all the time. Guidance is coming in all the time. We probably, if we heard it all, we, I'm sure we'd be overwhelmed. But if we don't, if we if we don't trust, or if we second question or second guess it, then we're not going to hear the messages. Or if we have expectations of how they're going to come in, and because I hear some pretty weird stuff sometimes, and it's just it's. I'll just say to my client, okay, this is weird, but we're going to go into a weird place here, but this is what's coming in. And just about, I think every time they've said, oh, that's because it reminds me of that, or that person said that, or that happened. And I had no idea when it came through. So trust is number one. And I think trust and and I think just a, a passion. It just, I love the feeling so much being in the moment. There's nothing else like that, you know, just being in the moment and between between trust and being in the moment and the passion for it. And I have complete and absolute faith in the non-physical light beings. You know, we're being looked after, we're being taken care of. And there, I just felt you really something there, Debbie. And it's knowing that we are being taken care of knowing that, you know, the past few years we went through, there's been a lot of fear all around the world. I mean, huge fear narrative was marketed to us. And twice I got downloads of, I I was like, almost like I asked the universe, do I need to worry about this? Is there anything to fear? And I got the message, you know, we, we are take, not taking care of us. We're looking out for you. We're guiding you, not just me, humanity. Yeah. And you're being guided. They're like very powerful, you know, physical and non-physical light beings who are, I don't want to say ensuring that all of humanity are going to continue because some people will choose to leave the planet or their time will be up. But those that are awakening or those that want to stay in the fight and struggle on the planet, I mean, that's their choice, but there's light beings taking care of us. And I just have complete faith in that. So between faith, trust, passion, it's, I just allow it to come through. So yeah, it's not me doing the knowing because when I'm in the 3D or going about my regular day, I don't necessarily have that knowing, but when I'm in the moment with a client, it's just, I love it. Yeah. Mm, Yeah. I love, I did have a release there because Ah, oh, it was just the way you said it, the energy with which you said it, the beings you're connected with, that they totally have got you and got us. And I mean, there was just this, I don't know, maybe remembering and also mm. how beautiful that you get to work like that and receive it. That feels like so much love and care to me. Um, and so because I'm having two parts of my brain, each want to ask a question. I want to try to honor both of them. So let's see how much of a lightning round we can do back and forth. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, yes. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is when you say something like that, Joy, those beings, are they angels? Are they from other planets? Are they from other dimensions? Are they all of the above? What is it a collective, uh, et cetera? 
Uh, they're definitely, yeah, from other, like higher dimensions, other dimensions. I call them my guides. I don't see in the, my personal life, I don't like labels I, at, at all, you know, puts us in a box. And I actually have told my guides, I don't want to know specifically, you know, some people know specifically where their guides are from and that. I don't want to know because then it puts a label on it. I have been told twice that, or told or felt Pleiadian energy come through. And other than that, I just, I, yeah, there are other dimensions or higher frequencies. I know they uh, come from, you know, pure divine love and, you know, that's annoying. And, but I don't know specifically where they come from because mainly, because I think it's more personal thing. I don't want to have that label to me, okay. it, to me, it would be a label. Beautiful. Thank you. So no labels, but uh, we, we get the energy of what you're talking about. And I know one of your fortes is this inherited trauma. So how does an inherited trauma shape who we are? What does that look like? How does it manifest? So you're, so you're referring to like generational or ancestral trauma? Yeah, inherited exactly, uh, being passed down. Like for instance, I'm I'm my father. I was going to say I am. That is so not right. Hello, <laughs> my father uh, and his family are Holocaust survivors. I mean, their story is an insane movie. What he went through, I wouldn't wish on anybody. But I'm I didn't live through it. But I became clear when I was young and in my 20s, I was I, I was an actress for many decades. And I had somebody while I was doing a show out of nowhere, have a conversation with me, find out I was Jewish. And this very learned man said to me, oh, you're second generation. And I was like, well, what does that mean? I had no clue. And he said, oh, sweetie, it gets passed down in the DNA, like your ancestors trauma. And then I thought, oi, and then being Jewish, it's like, that's some real trauma, right? That's not just my dad and his brother and my grandfather who died in the camp, concentration camp and la, la, la. This is also my people who have been running from country to country every time they get settled mm -hmm. down and feel accepted and start to assimilate in the village. And then the village, for whatever reason, turns on them and they have to run to another country with very little on their back. So that's like intense, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's other people out there who who knows alcoholism and wars and et cetera. So talk to that. What is that? How does it shape who we are? Okay, well, first of all, I felt some anger coming through. So let's go ahead. And yeah, this would be ancestral anger. So it's path, everything is energy. You know, we as humans, we operate through our five senses, but the six senses, you know, intuition, everything is energy. And when you realize that everything is energy and memory is encoded in that energy. And if we do not, this, you know, now this generation and we are actively working through our stuff, but up until now, like at least for the past couple thousand years, anyways, people didn't actively work through their stuff. And so it's just passed down energetically through memory, through the molecules, all of that passed down so the anger i felt was yeah that i can feel that's ancestral anger and even as i talk about it okay and that's oh yeah a lot of stuff coming up here so that's close the heart to a certain degree see they had to survive by closing the heart they had to survive mm -hmm. by when i say closing the heart it was they 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 stayed in a very 3d consciousness of we have to survive in that way. See, family used to be all about survival. That's 3D consciousness. And now we are all wanting, you know, well, not those that are awakening are wanting to really open their heart, be in that divine space, that divine love, connect to that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, okay, so we're going to go into this now. So it's bringing forth the anger. So just allow the anger to come up. Okay, there's more and more anger. Yeah, this has been... Right, you're going back three generations now. And so it started. So there were generations before that led to the Holocaust and what they went through. And okay, so are you okay? Can we go back three generations and do a bit of an ancestral clearing? Absolutely. Thank okay, you. Okay, so we're going to ask the universe to go back three generations. And okay, so no, there's some resistance here. So any ways in which you or your ancestors are resisting clearing out when this anger started. 
And there, let's witness that. Okay, there's some gentleness coming up. Okay, so the reason for the resistance was because you and your ancestors have never really been shown, demonstrated, blessed with gentleness, nurturing, kindness, compassion, that beautiful divine love. And there you go. It's not that you've never been shown. And again, it's not just you, Debbie, it's also your ancestors. It's that you've never allowed yourself to receive it wholly, completely. There you go. Okay, take a deep breath in, let that go. Okay, so now we can go three generations back. Yeah, I got a yes. Okay, so uh, universe guides, go to the moment in time when this anger started, whatever situation was, it's something about injustice. So feeling justified about being anger, angry about what was done to like the people in the third, th three generations back. So it's like a justified anger. So, okay, go ahead and universe guides, release the pain that caused the anger to start during that time, bless, heal. Okay, let's just go forward through your ancestral lineage there. Okay, yeah, there's some moments of anger anchored along there. So go ahead and release those moments of anger. Okay, so now we come to anxiety. We're still in your ancestral lineage. There's some anxiety. Okay, just breathe that in, let that go, let that go. Okay, let's go to your moment of birth. And anybody else who wants an ancestral clearing, this is it for you as well. Okay, go to your moment of, actually your moment of conception and the moment your soul entered the fetus. There you go. I was gonna say the phoenix there. So you were born to be a light. You came in to be a light to awaken others with your light, Debbie. Mm. There you go. Mm. Okay, so while you're in the womb, releasing. Uh, so it's actually not anger now. Now it's anxiety. Yeah. So honoring, acknowledging the anxiety. Okay, the moment of your birth. Uh, interesting. There was some anxiety as you were being birthed. There oh my God, go. my mother had so much. Yes. Um, interesting. Okay, so let's clear the anxiety out of that, uh, op like the operating room, the birth room. There you go. Clear it from your mother, yourself. Okay, so now there's a little bit of anger. Okay, so any ways in which you and your the generations before you have been stuck in an anger anxiety loop, let's go ahead and um, with your permission, just let that go in its entirety on all levels throughout all time and space. There you go. Okay, so now let's go through your along your present day timeline, release the anger anxiety loop. Uh, there's a sense of relief to the present day there. Take a wow. deep breath in, <laughs> let that go. There you go. That was incredible. I felt I feel very, very, very relaxed. And I know I have to stay with it right now because we're on my show. But it was like things, and it wasn't darkness, but it was, it definitely, um, not texture, but it was almost solid, but able to pass through me and out, out through me and out. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. And that feels so accurate, Joy. I had moments grow, like I deeply loved my grandparents. They were truly a earth angels. And with all the brilliance they were and the kindness and generosity, and I could go on and on, there was also this place where what you described existed. Not all the time. I didn't know when it was going to come. It really frightened me as a kid, the anger, the anxiety. I, well, I used to call it fear, but you're naming it. And I definitely was in my mother. And um, maybe in a different function because of my father's experience. I don't know what you'd call that, but wow. Thank you. <laughs> and all the generations that preceded me, thank you. That was really kind for you to do that. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. It just comes through spontaneously. That's it. Yeah, that's what I love. Just being in the moment like that when somebody gives me permission and, and it's trust. You just trust your guides. I mean, once you get to that place, the more a person starts trusting themselves, trusting their intuition, letting go of any expectations of how the messages or guidance are going to come in, because it might not come in in words or visions. It might come in as 
uh, a color or it might come in as seeing a rainbow or, or a, a bird or finding a feather or anything like that and paying attention to it. That might be the guidance and mm -hmm. start to pay attention to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can feel your ancestors are really happy right now. Oh. It feels like they're smiling. They must be thrilled. Thank you. They're going to bless mm -hmm. you. There'll be more light <laughs> angels working with you. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So I want to give people an idea since we're going to start taking uh, live folks to interact with you in a minute that that these can manifest these traumas. And so the, the subjects, and by the way, people will bring whatever subject they need to bring. And it can be, it can be this ancestral lineage, what I think is really powerful, or if it's ascension issues. But I want to deal with the trauma for a minute, the um how trauma can manifest. And I want you to fill some things in. So it could be, let's say you've repeated patterns like car accidents relationships that don't work out and breakups, loved ones dying, loss of uh, employment, abuse. So when these things happen, we can get stuck in this and it can create an emotional aftermath, right? And those mm -hmm. emotions can become stored somewhere inside us. In sh shamanic terms, we call that crystallized. And so mm -hmm. as shamans, we go into extract from people crystallized or sometimes fluid when it's an entity. Um, but, you know, once it's stored, there's these unconscious attachments to this situation. It becomes sort of a norm. And then there's limited feelings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then scenarios are created like anxiety, like shame, guilt, fear, anger, overwhelm, and lather, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. So is there anything in there you want to add to uh, that people can start to identify? Let's say somebody uh, has been working a job for 10 years and the boss calls them in. They think they're going to get a raise or something like that. And they get fired. There's a, a shock in that moment. Yes. There'd be If they're not expecting it, they're actually expecting a raise or a promotion and they get fired in the moment because this, you know, this happens and there's a shock and that person will go back to, uh, let's say their, yeah, their ancestors or, or your, their father or grand, grandparents, you know, grew up in the Holocaust and, Holocaust and went through that, or they were homeless and, you know, past lives and that then that's what they're going to remember. Like in that moment of shock, that's what they're going to. And if they're the generations before them had a poverty consciousness and, or they had, you know, the, and many people do have the nine to five mentality and you have to have a job and you have to work the job, which I call a J-O-B, just over broke. And, and then they go to that and the despair and such. And realize if anybody's going through that or anything like that, a relationship breakup or anything, then realize that is the despair, the how am I going to survive? I mean, especially with all the fear narrative we've been marketed to, you know, past few years is take a deep breath, take a deep breath, just and trust. And this is where it, and you can even just say the word trust over and over and over again. And then I'm a big believer in tapping EFT. I mean, I love that. I love it. Money. I do it every morning. Yes. Yeah. You know, for money. So, or I uh, getting through a relationship breakup, you know, say to just say, I, you know, I'm going to survive this or things will get better and anything like that. What you're, when you get a shock like that, it will bring up any, uh, yeah, any, you know, stored trauma or shocks from when you were young or past ancestral, let's say you're, let's say as a child, you go through a lot of abuse and let's say physical abuse and you're being hit. Well, let's say it's a, a father that hits a child and you, the father is, you grow up through just the collective consciousness, fairy tales and that saying, you know, thinking fathers are there to protect their kids. Let's say the father hits a kid. And the first time it happens, there's going to be shock and almost like disbelief in that. And then it, that will get stored in the nervous system. And then it happens more and more. And eventually that child will start to give up and they will believe, and this happens all the time. And I went, 
to my childhood when I was doing some inner child work and saw this happen to myself, where they will try to figure it out in their mind and they say, okay, well, because we need our parents or primary caregivers to survive. So they say, okay, daddy's good, I must be bad. So that starts the core wound of I'm bad. As they go forward in life, everything they're, they're doing, they're interacting, their, their behaviors is I'm bad. So that's the core belief they're coming from. And so start, there you go. I felt, yeah, that released something for some people. I, I, I just felt the release there. And know that you're not bad. No matter what you've gone through, what a person has done to you, what you've experienced, you have value. There you go. So consciously, you can, a person can know from, if something keeps repeating in their life, happening over and over and over again, if partners are always, you know, uh, like if relationships keep breaking up or they're not working out for the same reason or whatever, there's something there. Figure out what that is. Like you will know from your experiences in life. There you go. And the thing with that is, as in life, see, if we let's say we have the core belief of I'm bad and I'm not enough. And now based on that, you send out that energy. So the energy you send out, energy is like a boomerang. You get that back. So you start attracting experiences that in your core, this is, you don't do this consciously, of course, say I'm bad. So now you give those experiences a meaning. As humans, we give everything a meaning. We Because what it does, it, then it makes sense to us. And then it gives our world structure and the mind loves structure. And so we give it a meaning. Based on the meaning we give it, we create a story. We create our identity. So if you have ever, uh, or if a person has ever said, that's just how I am, people always treat me that way, that always happens to me, you know that's from conditioning. That's something you were taught. It is not a truth. Capital. So let me ask you, so truth. even if, uh, let's say you're trying to communicate with somebody, for instance, and say, <clears throat> you know, when you do this, it makes me feel X. And the person says, well, that's just the way I am. Like, it's your problem. but. I mean, is that also what you're talking about? That somebody is not even able to own something? There's a dissociation because it's connected to something and they're blind to it? If somebody says that, that's, uh, are they really committed to the relationship? Are they, are they willing to really be truthful and authentic and honest with themselves and say, you know, okay, Maybe it wasn't, you know, my my fault, but I'm willing to look at it. Are they at least willing to look at it? Because coming back with a, you know, response like that is just, yeah, lack of responsibility and and being authentic with themselves. So then the person who says, okay, when you did this, I felt this way. They want to ask themselves, do I really want to be in this relationship? This is where ascension symptoms can start to manifest when. If we stay in a, a relationship or a job or anything like that, and we know, we know it's time to move on. And, and I'm not talking about just one thing goes bad and it's, you know, you want to leave. I'm talking about having worked through it multiple ways, multiple times, months, years and such. And you know, it's time to move on, but it feels safe and comfortable and it's easy to stay. But you just, all the signs, the messages you're getting, the feedback from your partner and that is saying, you know, it's time to move on and you don't, then what we call ascension symptoms can come up, but they're showing you something. Like one of my clients emailed me and says, I've got a cough that started. And because I've been working with her, I know a little bit what's going on in her life. And I said, okay, well, that's, you know, that's your throat chakra. That's from being, feeling repressed from speaking your truth. Hmm. And this is, you know, this is what's going on. So it's like an indirectly, it's an ascension symptom in that it requires a person to take action. But that, in other words, there's two choices. You can stay stuck. And now like you go through all kinds of different things, see if it's going to work out. And, you know, whether it's a job or a relationship or whatever it is, and, and then if it's clear it's not going to work out, or if it's clear it's time to move on, then okay. you've got to make a decision. And that's where we step into courage. Beautiful. Because courage, courage and action. What, 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Courage is what gives us the, uh, the the motivation, the energy, the inspiration, the drive to take action. And action yeah. is the bridge between manifestation it. and actualization, like actualizing something in your life. Yes, action has the word act in it. Um, yeah. I see we're getting building up a little bit with some people who want to come okay. on and interact with you. So if it's okay with you, can I bring the yeah. first person on? Beautiful. Absolutely. So we're going to bring Walter on and um, Walter, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Hi, Walter. No oh, audio. Oh, there. Me too. Hi. Oh, there he is. Okay. And, Hi, Walter. Um, yeah, so now you know Walter's name, and I'm just going to say for you, but for anybody else who's calling in here, some beautiful handy-dandy instructions that will help Joy help you. Um, so no story at all, please. Be clear on your ask, specific on the problem. You don't need a story because if Joy isn't clear, she will ask you. And so we know your name is Walter, and what is it that you want to talk about today? Oh, we can't hear you. No. Okay. How about now? Oh, there you go. Got it. Okay. okay. Awesome. I had my microphone mute on. Sorry. <laughs> hi, Joy. And thank you. Hey, Walter. Thank you for being here. And hi, Debbie. <laughs> so for about seven and a half years, I have had sciatica, right side, um, hip down to my thigh. Okay. Uh, did anything happen around, you know, seven and a half, eight years, even nine years ago that started this? Yes. What was it? Yeah, I was in an abusive relationship the, where I got financially stuck. It took me about two years to find the finances to just be able to leave. I had moved in and business went down and my my uh, self-image went down because I was getting treated very badly. And it triggered that I had been treated that way by my uh, uh, adopted mother when I was a child. You're out of that relationship now? Oh, yeah. That's good, uh, good uh, <laughs> got out of it seven years ago. Okay. So the first thing when you mentioned the sciatica on the right side was anger. And so... Can I go ahead and start doing some clearing then? Yes. Okay. So any anger that is still stuck in that, see the right side is a masculine side, masculine energy. So there's a patriarchal masculine energy coming in that is angry. And yeah, so let's witness that. Okay, that's actually your dad's energy there, whoever raised you as a father. And yeah, oh, well, that's, Okay, so let's just witness. I'm just going to do a little light language here because that will embody the divine light. Yeah, that's bringing up the anger. He's getting really angry now. There's a sense of injustice coming up. Okay, there's a give up energy within you now. And that give up energy. So this is stuck more in your heart. Did you say somewhere along the way, I am never going to love again? No. Okay. Uh, you might have said unconsciously at some point, maybe when you're feels like when you're in the relationship and going, you know, experiencing the abuse. So any part of your heart that has been closed off that has stuck in giving up energy and refusing to be fully vulnerable and um, you're somewhat willing to love but receiving love you see as a this is all happening unconsciously and as a form of not well, not ma manipulation, but could turn into manipulation. So there's a like a little bit of distrust or receiving love there. Okay, there, there you go. There's some hurt. There's the wounded little boy there. Okay, so let's give little Walter some love. And yeah, he's really, really sad. And he says, nobody loves me. 
There you go. So let's just send little Walter, any, all the little kids on here. Let's send them love. There you go. Tenderness, gentleness, understanding, acceptance, complete and absolute acceptance. There you go. Okay. So little Walter is confused now. And he's like, what he says is it does, this doesn't feel right because the complete acceptance in beautiful, divine, kind, understanding, love is, it's not that he doesn't want it. It's just, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't, he's not scared of it. It just feels confusing. So little Walter, what that confusion is, is you've got one foot in the old world, what you're used to and your version of love and what love means. That's what you're used to. And this is, we're showing you, we're giving you a glimpse of divine love. And as I said that, he says, oh yeah, I remember. Oh, that was powerful. And what he remembers is being a divine presence before you came in, when you're in the womb, when you were first born, that like close to God, close to the creator. That's what he remembers. So now like that remembrance of being one with the creator of all that is that is awakened within you and little Walter is he says okay I'm happy okay just take a deep breath in let go okay so I just want to um specifically go to say to the sciatica was it in were you in pain when you said that or is it only certain times it's ongoing pain and uh sometimes worse than others i've gone to chiropractors in two phases um for maybe 10 12 sessions each time and it helped for a while after the last one it got better but it seems to just be a constant can and you feel it especially now? yes yeah and i especially notice it the moment that i stand up from sitting okay Okay, so let's just go to that. And yeah, there's still some anger. Okay, so as you go through through the day, as you fall asleep, wake up in the middle of the night, wake up in the morning, talk to that part of your body with kindness. Just say, just, if it's, you can just call it pain if you want, you can call it, you know, sciatica. And it feels like, actually, it feels like a dress. Just say, call it pain and say, hello, pain. Is there something you're trying to, uh, teach me or wake me up to. Okay, so I get a yes. Uh, anything uh, we should share now? Uh, no. Okay, so it's like for you to know. So ask the pain what, and if you don't hear anything, so any expectations you've got, it's how the answer is going to come in. And it might not just be one time. It might be uh, pay attention to yourself, be kind to yourself respect yourself and as you go along and you open up more and more the pains there to teach you a, to um not teach you a lesson so much but wake you up to a higher consciousness that's what it is so the pain is so any ways in which you're seeing the pain as the enemy it's not your enemy it's there it's actually there it's providing a purpose and that is to wake you up to higher consciousness so befriend the pain Thank and you. it doesn't mean now, okay, just one more thing I want to say. It doesn't mean befriend the pain and keep it as a friend because we have to do that with <laughs> right. emotions. Yeah. 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 Just ask it what it what it wants you to learn, wake up to, pay attention to, teach you. And then when just let well say this right now. So pain, when you are on the right, you know, the sciatica there, that area, when you are ready, when you have taught Walter what he needs to wake up to learn, pay attention to, release easily, effortlessly, gently. And if that time is now, then let it go. There you go. Okay, one more thing. Any ways in which you're seeing the pain as limiting you, any part of you that actually needs a pain right now, because there's some part of you that need you don't need to, but you feel you need to be limited, because if you weren't limited, then there are things like your your world would expand there and you're not quite ready for that. So universe, show Walter that it's safe to go out in the world, interact with the world in a bigger way. There you go. There, there's some relaxation and ease and happiness. Okay, take a deep breath in. 
Let that go. There you go. Okay. Thank you for that question, Walter. Yeah, yeah thank you so beautiful. much. Beautiful. And I just want to say that you're right on with everything, and especially the last part that all of my life I have had to force myself to go to social events put myself out there to take emotional risks, go to parties. And only in the last year or so have I successfully done that, pushed myself, but had fun at the same time. I didn't used to have fun at the same mm -hmm. time. I thought, okay, I got this right. <laughs> Good for you. So, Good for you. That's yeah. big. That's big. Because I went through that as well. Still do. So yeah. 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 Thank you. you so much. Thank you so Thanks. much. It was beautiful. Thank You're you, welcome. Walter. Okay. <laughs> and for everybody who's watching, <clears throat> just be aware that as I'm going to bring on another caller right now, as they receive. And Walter, I'm going to wish you adieu. It was great to see you. And thanks. <laughs> Thank um, you again, Joy. For, Thank you, Debbie. You bet. For everybody who comes on, just know, let's see if we can drop Walter here. Um, yeah, everybody's receiving. Everybody is receiving mm -hmm. from this. Oh, absolutely. So... Yeah, it is a gift to all of us. I'm going to just put my, okay. There we go. And now I'm going to bring on Candy. And Candy, welcome to the show. It is so great to have you. I don't know if you heard, but just in case, I will reiterate, you'll be interacting with Joy. Just be clear on your ask. And specific on the problem, no story. Uh, Joy will ask if she needs more information. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Candy. Thank you. Hi, Joy. Thank you so much, Debbie. So the thing that I would love assistance on is what feels like a fear of thriving on some level. Um, I feel like there's a repeat pattern of survival and sort of feast or famine. So setting, I, I'll set the set point higher, create unnecessary anxiety. And then eventually I hit the set point, but it's this repeat cycle that for some reason there seems to be, and I don't know if it's a spiritual resistance or an emotional resistance to really stepping into a space of thriving versus what feels like a superpower of surviving. Okay, superpower of surviving. Never heard that one before, but I know that yeah very well. Okay, so if you were thriving, Candy, how would you be living? Like, what would be different in your life? Would you, you know, travel? Would you buy a house, a bigger house? You know, would you? What would you be doing? Um, I guess a business, write a book. Well, there, there would be a sense of freedom, so that I would have my own assets in terms of a house, property, spaciousness. Um, and then the other would be, I would be able to give more to the organizations and the causes that are in my heart. Um, I feel like I'm limited in both capacities. Okay. So what you're saying is you get close to that, or, you know, maybe it's really going to happen this time and something happens. Like it just... yeah, I feel like I self-sabotage as I start to feel over that line mm -hmm. of, oh, it's just the next level of survival. It feels as if I, I will set a set point that says, now I'm going to do this a month, or now I'm going to bring in this on a consistent basis. And I create this angst mm -hmm. and I then finally find myself surrendering and letting go only because it's like, I get the universal two by four. And then I meet <laughs> the set point And then it's like, I'm wash, rinse, repeat. And I'm all over in that cycle once again. Okay. Okay. So uh, imagine yourself getting to that point when you get the, just before you get the universal two by four, you've got great metaphors, by the way, I love them. <laughs> and okay. So what you're being asked to do is to step into the, your, your courage and take action, which is the next level of consciousness. But there's, it's like, there's a wall there. It's almost like you're a part of you is having a temper tantrum and saying, no, I won't, no, I won't. And it's a little kid within you, the little girl within you that is angry over never having been heard or understood or really listened to or witnessed or acknowledged. And what she says is, she cusses a little bit there, I won't repeat it. <laughs> and she says, I'm never, until I am acknowledged, I'm seen, I'm witnessed, I'm heard, I'm appreciated, valued, I am not going to take the next step. Okay, so. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Okay. So 
little candy, what if it's going to take taking the next step? So then she goes into a bit of a temper tantrum and says, no, I'm not going to. Okay, so nobody's going to make you. She So she gets angry at, at me, me and my guides, and says, yes, well, you're trying to make me. Okay, so... So you really don't like being told what to do. You have a real, like, yeah. I mean, somebody tells you what to do. You are literally do the, the exact opposite, even if it's, you know, going to harm you. And like, if somebody was to come in and say, Candy, oh my gosh, you're, you can be so successful, make so much money. You're, yeah, I mean, you're desiring freedom. I mean, freedom is your birthright in that. You would literally look at the person, you know, say, uh, no, I don't think so, to be right and and all those other things we've mentioned okay so the part of you that feels like if somebody says to you let's say you're having a conversation with somebody and they say candy i can see it within you you have you've got what it takes to be so highly successful to embrace freedom imagine just embracing like embodying that freedom that expansiveness and you start to feel that and they say that's that that's within you all you need to do is claim it receive it and you can have the assets the property the travel the freedom all of that see you feel that i can feel you like oh yeah but then there you go there's the anxiety coming up and little candy is saying, but you're not listening to me, meaning you yourself, you're not listening to her. Oh, there you go, your whole self relax. Okay, so little candy, what do you want from your adult self? Okay, so she gets really, really sad and feels really alone. And she says, I feel like nobody understands me. So as an adult, what's happening is you start to feel inspired, you listen to somebody or you talk with somebody and you're inspired after that. But you feel like, like when you sit with it or when you go to take action, there's a part of you that says, but they don't, they don't understand me, who I am at my core. They don't understand what I've gone through or they don't know what I've gone through. And it's like you're, okay, so all the ways you're waiting, some part of you is waiting for somebody actually humanity to really see that the pain and struggle and and fight you've gone through in your life and once you can finally be understood for that then you're saying then i will be successful there you go oh self-relax so any part of you that wants to not know him but wants to be understood for the pain the fight the struggle and all the ups and downs all the the and the courage has taken you every time you've had to, you know, new set point, you bust through the barrier and that. And until you're understood for that, there's a part of you that. It's like you're waiting for that. And then you're saying, OK, now I'm free to embrace freedom. But what if imagine just feel that you embraced freedom now? You know what it feels like. There you go there. So there's a bit of a wall, but it's quite far out yet. So just imagine the feeling of circulation in your body, the blood flow, the energy, lymph. There you go. Just circulating easily and effortlessly in your body, feeling light, free, harmonious within yourself, allowing that to radiate out. Okay, there you go. There's some anxiety there. It's, it's out in your energy field, though. So we're going to witness that anxiety and just let that flow out a little bit more. Okay, there's a belief there. And so we're going to the uh, mental, emotional body there, or mental body. And the belief is, I can't do it. So all the ways you were taught, I can't do it. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. What will they think to care about what others think to stop yourself, you know, in case of what others will think? There you go. Let's witness all of that. Release that from the mental body. There you go. Release that from any parts of your physical self, any cells in which that's stuck in. Release that. There you go. There's some release, relaxation and ease. Okay. There's some fun and laughter and little candy feels really happy right now. 
Okay, so let's align you and anybody else who desires freedom, a feeling of freedom, understanding free freedom, embodying freedom. Let's align all aspects of yourself, mind, body, spirit, soul, with freedom, with the expansiveness of oneness, the beauty of the creator. There you go. Shokabasa, walasa shoko. There you go. Take a deep breath in. Let that go. There you go, Candy. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was super beautiful. I hope everybody out there is also just allowing this to wash over you because you know, if energy is everything and we are everything, there's a piece of everyone who's coming on this that we also are, and you can just keep receiving. This is such beautiful, profound work. So thank you for your honesty, Candy, and your transparency so much. Thank you both so much. That was, mm. uh, that was incredible. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Excellent. Thank you. Amazing. We're going to bring on the next person now, and we're going to bring on uh, Rob. Rob is here with us, and I guess I'll just keep repeating in case anybody hasn't heard. Rob, welcome to the show as you are connecting. And by the way, folks who are listening to the podcast, you could always go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and watch if you want to see. It's also on video on Spotify. So Rob, welcome to the show. And Hi, Rob. <laughs> you want to say I just said hi you? Rob I was just going to say hi Rob yeah just what Debbie was going to say it looks like you're still connecting to audio oh, uh, yeah just connecting. clarity yeah just okay so, yeah so just be clear and then if there's any other questions or I need any more information I'll ask you but the clearer you are and that's also supports you because then you're not lost in your story yeah it looks like you're still connecting to audio there's no audio maybe it's going through your car <laughs> instead of your phone happens to me all the time it goes through bluetooth instead and if we can't get him in a minute we'll take someone else and then come back to rob unless you have a headset you can pop in and um and i just want to repeat for those who are yeah thank you got it for those who are enjoying this i mean i'm going to walk away from this so calm after today joy's website is courage in action joy do you have anything coming up i mean you always have things coming up but what do you have you might want to tell people about while he's getting set up okay uh i was going to say they can also if they want to contact me directly it's joy at courage and because my website sometimes still a little you know finicky and it won't come up so yeah just email me uh, i do have I, I offer 33 days of healing and the next one is going to be, I believe, October. And that, that includes uh, daily healing. It's messages from spirit, which are, you know, 10 audio messages. It also includes two Q and a calls. That's not posted on my website yet, but that's something, you know, or people can just sign up and then I'll, they'll get notices about that. Uh, and I just want to say a little shout out. I did your last one and that ending meditation that you did. Oh, I put it mm. on my meditation playlist. It's, it is the most uh, calming and beautiful. Your energy when you do these, it's beyond like wherever mm -hmm. you come from. It's so felt here. So highly recommended. And Joy's price point is beautiful. Yeah, I try to make it as you know affordable for everybody. Yeah, that was that last one, the meditation being love. It was, yeah, that's what I was hoping. Thank you for that. I was hoping to, you know, impart some really great energy on that. Yes. Well, Rob, welcome to the show. Audio is good now. It's mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Hey, yes, Rob. Good okay. job. Hi. Did you hear um what what Joy said in the beginning? Um be yeah, clear. Just basically your... state the issue and yeah. without a, a lot of other peripheral information sounded like to me yeah. yeah and she'll ask questions if she needs okay so i was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2011 i basically self-managed it without too much trouble uh just recently over the past couple of months i found that it had metastasized so it's become a little more of a serious issue 
So I would be very interested to find out what, if any, is uh, a cause for it, um, especially any kind of non-physical cause. And uh, if you have any ideas on what I might do to dispel it, I would be interested to know. Uh, metastasize, does that mean it spread or what does yes. that mean? Yes, it means uh, in terms of prostate cancer in particular, metastasize just means spreading throughout the body. So what, what it has done is it spread outside my prostate uh, only to a small degree, but still it has become a more serious issue since it has uh, gone outside into other parts of the body. Hmm, okay. Uh, do you know what parts of the body or did they tell you? Uh, just uh, areas adjacent to the prostate. It's just okay. kind of, you know, it's, okay. it's shooting out little parts of itself uh, that are beyond the prostate. And, and you know, it's still a moderate um, manner. There's no, nothing particularly life-threatening about it at this moment. But if I ignore it, uh, it may impact yeah. my lifespan. Okay. Are you still, are you taking chemo for it, radiation? Or are you doing your own treatments or...? Chemo is not used in prostate cancer. Okay. Uh, the people I've spoken to about it are advising me to take uh, radiation. I'm kind of disinclined to go the standard of care route just because there are so many other options out there. And I have a little bit of distrust of the uh, American medical complex or also known as the cancer industrial complex uh, because there is, is so much uh, greed and financial sh shenanigans in that business. Although there are many well-meaning people, of course, too, but uh, you know there, there are parts of that business that I, I don't think behave in an ethical manner. So okay. I'm a little bit, little bit gun shy of going down that road for okay. those and other reasons. Okay, so let's look at, see so your man of uh, 2011, and just see what's energetically going on here. Uh, there's anger, but there's anger came up first, but there's actually a lot of fear beyond that. Okay, so let's go right into the fear. Yeah, even identifying that. Now this all in 95% of who we are is unconscious conditioning. So this is unconscious, it's buried really, really deeply, really deeply. And this fear is, yeah, it's really black. So the fear, is this a, was this installed within you? I'm getting an installation, I'm getting a yes. Uh, who installed it? Okay, so can I go into this a little more? It looks like a past life. Fine with me. Okay. Uh, okay. So it looks like a past life here. And yeah, there's some, so you were in a past life, you were um, intimidated, like to a great degree, somebody didn't like you, and a lot of anger, you were really intimidated, you were very, very scared. And it was yeah, it impacted like that, that area, the fear got stored there. So, okay, so what happened? So this person was a real bully. They were really big and I'm not sure who it is in this lifetime. Could be your dad, but I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. Okay, so what, how do we, so we need to go to this past lifetime. Actually, let's see. Okay, so in that past lifetime, when the moment you passed, so you, you left that lifetime just before you passed. So you stayed in fear. So this, okay. So any ways in which is bully in the past life put a curse on you, any ways in which they implanted fear upon you. And they, they literally, um, the words that are coming in took away your manhood. And that's what it felt like, like the intensity of fear. So let's witness that and bless that okay there you go so we need to bless so go to the past life and that fear so you're being given permission to go to the intensity of the fear there and there you go and simply bless that bless that like your entire being in that fear the fear itself in beautiful radiant gentle healing divine light and love there you go. Okay, so that there's a fear there. And what you're saying is, so in the past life, you're saying, I won't know who I am. So all the ways you don't know who you are, Rob, unless there's fear within you. And again, I'm not talking on the conscious level, but there's a, if, 
like if you don't feel some semblance of, of fear, if fear is not in some way, shape or form guiding who you are, who you be, what you say, your actions, your feelings, then it's like you don't know who you are. This is not a conscious thing whatsoever. There you go. Any ways in which you need fear to guide you in this lifetime or the past lifetime, any ways in which you leave without fear, because see, fear connects you to 3D consciousness. And, you know, the majority of humanity is 3D consciousness. That's what we've known for thousands of years is that, you know, the matrix 3D consciousness limitation and such. And okay, there you go. So what you're, what the fear is really about is freedom, feeling free, feeling expansive and light, even just identifying that. I don't know if you felt that, but your whole self relax. It's like you've been waiting a lifetime to, uh, identify that your real desire in life is to experience freedom, to embody freedom. Universe, as long as you're willing, Rob, universe, guide Rob and show and bless Rob with the beautiful feeling of freedom and anybody else who desires to feel freedom. Okay, interesting. So you you're willing to feel it you felt it many times in your life but what you've been neglecting up until now is bringing your body along so i mean when we're in meditation or with a group of people we can feel that blissful feeling but you also want to bring your body along okay then there's some hate for your body because you feel like your body has let you down so many times and this is the past lifetime and this lifetime there you go so they're very connected so any ways in which that past lifetime has you um, living in fear the fear connects you to the 3d what you desire is freedom and you can in meditation and such with a group of people and and embody that freedom, that oneness, that blissful feeling, but then your body feels neglected. So let's show your body, if you're, as long as you're willing, mind, body, spirit, soul, the beauty, the absolute beauty of feeling free, the wholeness of you feeling free, embodying freedom. There you go, your whole body just relaxed. Yes, body, that's the beauty of freedom. There, the past life, you let go of that, that's been healed. Okay, so at any time, no, you can ask the universe to bless your body and show your body what it feels like to feel and be free, to embody freedom. So what you're doing is you're, it's like you are aligning your body with your spirit and soul because your spirit and soul knows how to feel free. There you go. So you let's align mind, body, spirit, soul, your heart, your emotions, all of you with the essence, the beauty, the space of freedom. There you go. Okay. So I heard you say, how will I get anything done? So any ways in which you're trying to figure out, like we all are, like, how do I be in this 3D world, this 3D consciousness and live from this and be from this space of freedom? What we're doing in this, in this, in this world is we're cycling between dimensions. So it's not like you have to stay in this 5D space all the time, this higher consciousness. Allow yourself to be in the space of freedom, mind, body, spirit, soul, embody that. And then as a light worker, know that you're coming back to 3D consciousness and you are bringing, you're, you're not here to just stay stuck in 3D. You're here to embody the light, to bring the seed, the light back into 3D consciousness, and then allow yourself to experience that freedom again. So you're cycling through the dimensions. There you go. There's the realization. And I just felt the, there was some healing in the prostate in that area there. There you go. There, there's some healing. Simply allow the healing and allow it to be now. And as long as you need it, allow this healing to be now. And as long as you need it, allow this healing to be now. And as long as you need it. 
There you go. Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. That was amazing. That was amazing. I love your light in my language too. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Rob, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Hope you got lots out of that. And now we are going to bring on, I think this will be the last uh, person here. This should be Al or Albert we're bringing on to the show. Al, welcome to Dare to Dream. You're muted so you can unmute yourself. And while you do that, I'm just going to connect you with Joy, who's been doing just amazing work on the show so far. And she's going to ask you to be clear on your ask, state your specific problem, and no story needed. She'll ask you questions if she needs to know more. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Thank you. Do you like to be called Al or Albert? Al, please. Al, okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Joy. Thank yeah, you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to be here. Um, you know, I think mine probably overlaps some of the other people I know with, uh, with, uh, Deb, Debbie and, uh, Candy and, and some of Rob's, but what I'd like to, um, have shift is anxiousness. I've been experiencing a lot of anxiousness in many situations where I am becoming very anxious over, uh, different scenarios in my life. And, um, it, it, it seems more subconscious. I'm not an anxious person uh, by nature, but when situations arise that I can't control or go a, a, a different way than I expected to, I, I become anxious and agitated. And I have these feelings of uneasiness and that leads to mental chatter. And I start feeling fear. And I have a grandmother that raised me that was an amazing uh warm-hearted individual she's I would consider her a saint but boy I'll tell you she was the most um fearful person and anxious about any situation in life and I think as I get older I'm starting to adopt some of that it's permeating my being I never used to be that way as a young person but now I'm starting to incorporate that more and more um and and it's for me, it's it's uh, difficult because I, I feel like I'm losing control in certain situations when I know there's nothing there. But my mind creates these uh, fearful thoughts and emotions and mm -hmm. uh, negative energy, if you will. Is there anything specific you would like to create, actualize in your life, but you feel like just overcome with anxiety when you even think about it or take action? Can you think of anything specific or... Is it more just anytime you want to go out in the world or live life bigger? You know, it's it varies. It's just spontaneous. I'll be, uh, maybe I'll be late for a flight, for example. And then all of a sudden I start getting really anxious. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to be fine. But there's some innate feeling that drives me towards a fearful um, scenario in my head. And I keep um, feeling uh, e emotions of uneasiness and worry, worriness, which I never mm -hmm. used to that way okay thank you so as you as you were talking there was uh your your throat chakra is yeah feels very blocked so let's start there with there's something you're wanting to express okay so it has to so it's a childhood wound and it has to do with not feeling heard or understood and really seen like somebody really knowing you and, and parents, even if they're awesome parents or grandparents, generally don't, uh, you know, really see the child. Like we always want to be seen. A, a little kids can be, you know, they, they want attention and they want to be seen and heard and understood. And there you go. So that, okay, any anger that's, that is stuck in your throat chakra, let's witness that. And if you're willing, just release that, just gather that up. Gather that up. There you go. Send that to the light. Okay, so now there's some grief coming up and a feeling of being alone. 
and what it, there it is. What if it all falls apart? What if it all falls apart? Okay, so imagine that. Actually imagine that, Al, that it all, and it is whatever the fear is. So it all fell apart, whether you, yeah, missed your flight. And in other words, you've got a structure. Okay, this is the way it's going to happen. These are actions I'm going to take. This is the way it's going to happen. Like you said, you like to be in control. So what if it all falls apart? So go ahead and imagine that whatever the situation is, it all falls apart. There you go. Okay, there's some grief. And what happens? It's like everything you've built your life upon, your like the foundation, the emotional energetic foundation, all the meanings you've given your experiences, feels like if one thing in your life falls apart, you're late for a flight, you uh, miss saying something to this person, or you say it in a way you wish you hadn't, or you don't pick up the, even picking up the right groceries, whatever that is, then there you go. Then it feels like, it's almost like a very, uh, um, shaky foundation that you're walking upon and it will all fall apart and okay there you go and it feels like um how do I describe this it's it's almost like you're saying to yourself I've got to keep it all together I've got to keep it all you know everything going and it's just it's a balancing act so let's just give permission now for it all to fall apart. Like, let's imagine you're doing a balancing act, which it feels like, and it all falls apart. There you go. There's your fear. So that was the anxiety first. Now we go into the fear and the fear is, oh my gosh, everything's been destroyed. How do I put it back together? That's a question you're asking yourself. It's like how, maybe not consciously, but unconsciously, how am I going to put this all together? So in other words, what's happening? You're trying to keep it all together. You're, it's like a balancing act that brings up the anxiety. If I'm late for the flight or this or that, or if I don't say that, or somebody says this, like it doesn't fit into my, you know, the structure and then the foundation gets it's shaky and then you go into anxiety and if it all falls apart just imagine it all falls apart then you go into fear see what you're doing because that has happened this isn't the first time so when what you're trying to do is put it all together the way it has been your entire life but that's not happening any longer that's not happening that we're in a completely different space energy consciousness and so any ways in which you're afraid that if your life falls apart, if it's not, you know, the threads that are holding it together start to uh, break apart. There you go. Even if it's just one little thing, because like one little thing like being late for a flight feels like to you, that's the story you tell yourself, it would unravel everything. And then, and you would actually be okay with that if you knew you could put it all together the way it's been your entire life. But you're also aware enough to know, to realize that we just don't live in the world we, that we did even five, three years ago, five years ago, 10, 20, 30 years ago, or when you were a child receiving your conditioning, that emotional and energetic foundation you've been walking upon your entire life. So it's like the part of you that it's like, that's familiar. That emotional, energetic childhood foundation is familiar. And there's a part of you that wants to put everything back together that way. Because see, then you can be in control and then you can feel safe. There you go, your whole self relax. So the word I used it right at the beginning, and that is trust. Just trust. You're very connected. You're very connected, Al. So trust that the light beings, your guides, the archangels, whatever you want to call them, the creator has your back, is going to take care of you. And allow yourself to be quiet and imagine they've got a message for you. And it could come in as a picture, words. It could come in when you get up after the show and you go to do something. You open a book and just a sentence or paragraph or word, you start, somebody says something, you need to hear that. So any expectation of how the message or guidance is going to come in, just let that go. And let's awaken within you, trust, trust, trust. Okay, any resistance to awakening trust because what you're saying is then I have to let go of control. And that's really scary. And yeah, absolutely, it is. It is really scary. There you go. 
but trust. Trust that your highest and greatest good is taken care of. Trust that you are going to be taken care of. Trust that your higher power is looking out for you. Trust that the light beings are supporting you, looking out for you, that they have your back, that they're guiding you. There you go, the back of your heart chakra just opened up and now you're connecting to, so the back of the chakras along the spine there, that's where you're receiving. So you're connecting to divine love and receiving. Okay, so a little bit of anger came in there as you're starting to uh, receive divine love. And the reason for the anger is as you receive divine love, you start to embody that, you know, at a molecular level, you start to shift. You can't, you can't be in control. So the anger is trying to stop the divine love from coming in. There you go. So let's just witness the anger. And the anger is, it comes from fear. There you go. So let's witness that. There you go. There's some happiness. There's some happiness. Anyone who ever taught you to be scared and anxious of everything in the world, any ways in which that's manifesting now in your life, any ways in which that's causing you to feel limited, let's honor and acknowledge all of that. Bless all of that, accept it. And as it's ready and as you're ready, just let that go. Let that go on all levels, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, cellular, and throughout all time and space. There you go. Shokabasa, walasa shoko, kowalasa, walasa shokabasa, walaka, awalasa. Imagine embodying calmness and trust, calmness, peace, and trust. Imagine radiating an energy, a frequency of calmness, peace, trust. And anybody you interact with, you think of, they are blessed with that. Some will receive it, some will reject it, and that's okay. It'll just go to the light. It'll just go to the light. There you go. Shokabasa, walasa shokabasa, walaka, aligned with calmness and trust, peace. So shokabasa wala ka wala sa shoko ko wala sa baba ka wala sa shoko ko wala sa wala sa shokabasa wala ka awala sa so shokabasa wala ka. There you go. Take a deep breath in. Let that go. There you go, my friend. Wow, that was wonderful. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah, I I went deep in and I, I, I realized some of the root causes. And I, I thank you for it for awakening that that subconsciously in, in there. And I, I had a epiphany, a realization. And I think oh, awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Al. That was so beautiful. Wow. I went deep too, I have to say. That was amazing. People came on with such amazing things today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap up the show. And um, for those who are on today and want to hear the replay, there'll be a replay out there. And uh, Joy, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? Uh, well, peace on earth is what comes to mind. I mean, I wanted that as a child as well. We will eventually get there, but it could take hundreds of years and yet, you know, many lifetimes. Uh, right now, what I would love and the reason I do this work in, is, well, I love the one-on-one -on -one with people. So that's my passion. But for people to value themselves, believe in themselves trust and know that they are being taken care of, that the universe, the, the angels, the archangels, the masters, the saints, they have your back. They're there for you. And no matter what has happened to you or no matter what you've done when you were in a different consciousness, a lower consciousness, forgive yourself, trust, and let value yourself. Be all you can be. You are worthy and deserving of living your best life ever, whatever that is for you. There you go. So if I could dream, is that just be kind, be kind, 
Just be kind to yourself, be kind to others and value yourself. Because those that value themselves, believe in themselves, that recognize their worth, they are automatically kind. They're kind to themselves and they're kind to others. Imagine living in a world of kindness. Hello. Where people just, yeah, just imagine that. You know, yes. well, the song Imagine by John Lennon, like imagine living in a world of kindness and of beauty. Mm. And it starts with each of us. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. And I've often heard that, well, people will take it out on strangers sometimes, but oftentimes people will take it out on the ones they love the most, the ones they're most mm. intimate in, and that they actually, it would make sense to offer their gratitude and appreciation and gush over the person for how everybody shows up for each other in intimate friendships, relationships, family, and so forth. So yeah, I love that. Be kind to one another. And I want to be clear. So for people who love this, like if that was a five minute, can you imagine a whole session with Joy? Mm -hmm. And Joy, mm -hmm. you work on obviously ancestral trauma healing. We saw today health, <clears throat> freedom. What else? Finances. What can oh yeah, I've gone through two bankruptcies. So yeah, I love working with money because it's never about money. Money is about relationships. We have a relationship with money. So it's always about something else. The money is when, like it always leads us into so many fascinating, and interesting areas when we work with money. So yeah, I love working with money. And, and I've had people, um, I had one person, like I also work with people just from their picture. And so they send me their picture. And I think I gave you one a, a session like that, a freedom clearing. And yeah, and so they send me their picture and everybody's got their own unique energy signature. And so we work from that and clear whatever, you know, whatever the issue is and what's there. And I had a woman uh, say to me, she just wanted, you know, a, a clearing for financial abundance. That's all she said. So that's what I did. And about six I know, was it yeah, something like six months or a couple of years later, she emailed me, back, emailed me back and said, I didn't tell you this, but I've been looking for a house for five years. After I got your clearing, she said, I found a house. I put an offer on it. The offer's been accepted. And I know she was waiting for the offer to be accepted. That was it. And she emailed me about six months later. Offer was accepted. I'm moving. I live in my house now. She says, I love it. And she'd been looking for five years. And she didn't tell me specifically that. I just knew she just wanted a clearing for financial abundance. So, yeah, right on. Well, that's beautiful. So, if you love Joy like I do, go to her website, courageinaction.com. And she was also very gracious. And she said, or if you want to reach out to her directly, email her, joy at courageinaction.com. You could book a session or a package of sessions, join her classes and so forth. Joy, thank you so much for coming on the show. And folks, she's going to be back in a month. And she's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And thank you to all your amazing listeners and callers. Beautiful show today. I got tons out of it. So I end today's show with this quote, embrace the power within you. The key to liberation lies in your willingness to journey back through time, unearth the wisdom of your past, cleanse the shackles of limiting beliefs, and release the emotions that have held you captive. Only through the courage to heal can you unlock the door to a future adorned with dreams fulfilled and life unburdened. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Subscribe right now. Thank you so much for being part of this journey with me. Leave a comment. As you know, I read them all and I respond. Next week on the show, the guest is going to be the amazing Brad Olson. He's an award-winning author and Brad is heard at Contact in the Desert, UFO Mega Conference, 3D events, dozens of radio and television shows. And he's traveled to all seven continents seeking adventure and the answers to the mysteries of humankind's past. Thank you for joining us. Be kind to one another and dare to dream.